This is part 34 of Razor Pages tutorial. In this video, we will discuss how to implement CRUD operations that is create, read, update and delete in ASP.NET Core using the Visual Studio scaffolding feature. This feature generates the full set of CRUD pages. We can then modify and fine tune these pages to meet our application specific requirements. To use the scaffolding tools, we need two things already set up the model class for which we want to scaffold the CRUD pages and our application DB context class that knows how to connect and work with the data in the underlying database. This is the same project we've been working with so far in this video series. If we take a look at this employees folder, we created all these CRUD pages manually. Manually creating these pages from scratch consumes a lot of time. We can use Visual Studio scaffolding feature to have these CRUD pages auto-generated for us and thereby saving a lot of time. So to this pages folder, let me add a new folder. Name it V2 for version 2. To launch the scaffolding feature, right click on this folder, add new scaffolded item. We have several templates. Using the scaffolding feature, we can generate MVC controllers, API controllers, CRUD razor pages using entity framework. We want this last option. First, we need to select our model class. We want pages to be scaffolded for creating, reading, updating and deleting employees. So my model class is going to be employee and we have to select our application DB context class, which is app DB context class. And we don't want this to be created as a partial view. So I will uncheck that. We want to reference script libraries and we also want to use our existing layout page and then click add. This takes a few seconds to generate the required CRUD pages. There we go, scaffolding complete. And when I expand this V2 folder, we see the full set of generated CRUD pages. Now let's run our project and see these CRUD pages in action. At the moment, we are on the home page. Our scaffolded pages are in a folder called V2. So if we navigate to slash V2, we see the index page where we have the full list of employees. This data is coming from the database. So if we take a look at the employees table, notice we have six records here and we see all these six employees on the list page. Create new. This link takes us to the create resume page. Notice if I try to create a new employee without providing any of the required fields, we get the required validation errors as well. So this means the validation attributes that we have on our model employee class are also taken into consideration. And if we take a look at the generated create resume page, notice we have validation summary and validation for tag helpers. This form is not perfect, but keep in mind, all of this code is auto-generated for us, which obviously means we already have saved a lot of time. We can take this form as the starting point and then fine tune it to meet our requirements. For example, for this photo path field, we want to replace this text input field with a file upload control. Similarly, for this department field, we want to replace the text input element with a select element. If we go back to the list page, we have links to view existing employee details, edit and even delete. Notice we have a nice delete confirmation page. When I click back to list, we go back to the list. On the other hand, if we click the delete button, the respective employee record is deleted. All these CRUD pages are fully functional. We have just used this scaffolding feature against one entity class employee, but there is nothing stopping us from repeating this process for every entity that we have in our project. Just imagine the amount of time this scaffolding feature can save us. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.